In the last half of the video on section 1-9, graphing calculators, solving equations and inequalities graphically, we were talking about using the um, zero function on the graphing calculator, how to change the window so we can see where a solution is. So sometimes in a problem, particularly in this textbook, they'll tell you to look for a solution on a certain interval. If they do that, what they're really telling you to do is to change the set the window setting on your calculator. So in order to solve x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x equals the square root of x, it looks really nasty, I, I understand that, but it really isn't if we use the graphing calculator to help us. First of all, I would make this be an equation that's equal to zero. Because if you do that, so if you subtract the square root of x and you set it equal to zero, and then you put this part of the equation into y1 equals, the solution is where the graph hits the x-axis. So you're just looking for the x-intercept. Well, that's a lot better than trying to do this algebraically, because trust me, you don't want to do this algebraically. It'd probably take you about two days. The interval those are your x values. So this is saying change your x minimum to be 1 and your x maximum to be 6. Here's an example of what the equation looks like when I plug it into my calculator. So if any of you out there are still working on an old TI-83, yours will probably look like mine. If you're working on a newer TI-84, particularly one that has the new operating system on it, yours probably has the exponent of 3 as an actual exponent, and then the square root, when you do that, it actually looks like this. So if you're working on a TI-84, your screen probably says that instead. Either way, it'll, it'll work the same way. So if you're working on an old TI-83, the rule of the game is don't forget to close your parentheses. Don't forget to change your window settings. I just realized this picture I took, uh, this actually does say 1, and when it's uh, not flashing, I just pressed uh, the camera button at the wrong time. And then your graph should look like this. Remember you change the x-axis to go from 1 to 6. So this is 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, there are two solutions here, aren't there? Uh, so we want to figure out where those two solutions are. This first solution over here, it's not quite at 2. It seems to be to the right of 2, so it must be between 2 and 3. So in order to find that 0, I'm going to press second trace to go to the calc function. I'm going to go to option number 2, which is 0. And then for left bound, I'm going to put in 2 and then enter. And then for the right bound, I'm going to put in 3 and then enter. And when it says guess, you hit enter again. And it's going to tell you that the answer is about 2.18. So that's one of the zeros or solutions to this equation. The other one is here between, let's see, that was 2, 3, that must be 3 and 4. In order to find that next zero, you have to go through this process again. It's really not that big of a deal. Second trace, number 2. My left bound this time is going to be 3, and my right bound is 4. When it says guess, don't forget to hit enter. And it tells me this time the solution is 3.72. So as you'll notice, using the graphing calculator to find this solution was the best way to do it. But if you're given an equation, let's go back up here, in this format, the be in order to put it into the calculator to find the solution, make sure the equation equals zero. Now let's try an application problem where we want to use our graphing calculator to help us solve. Two light sources are 10 meters apart. One is three times as intense as the other. The light intensity, L, 
in a unit called lux at a point x meters from the weaker source is given by the equation L is equal to 10 over x squared plus 30 over 10 minus x squared. Find the points at which the light intensity is for lux. Okay, light intensity, that's like how bright the light is. So here's a picture of my two light sources. The bigger bulb is the bulb with the higher intensity and the smaller bulb is the one with the lower intensity. We want to find how far away um, you have to be from the bulb in order to be four lux. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to solve the equation four is equal to 10 over x squared plus 30 over 10 minus x squared. Now in the last problem I said one way of doing this problem was to set the equation equal to zero and find where the graph hits the x-axis. There's another way of doing it, and it would have worked the same for the last problem as well. What I can do instead is plug this into y1 equals, and plug this into y2 equals, and find where those two graphs intersect each other. That will also find for me the value of x. Here's what the two equations look like when I plug it into my calculator. Uh, one of the things I want to point out to you is in y2 equals when I put in 10 over x squared plus 30 over 10 minus x squared. Notice the 10 minus x squared. The 10 minus x is in parentheses before I put the square. We're going to run into this a lot this school year where we're trying to use our calculator to help us with something and the denominator of a fraction is an algebraic expression. Always put that expression in parentheses. Here's what the calculator looks like when you graph. Actually, let's scratch that for a second because I just realized that when I was going to make a picture of this, I accidentally typed in a number into this screen so mine had a 7 there. So disregard that picture. If you're doing this on your own calculator, the picture should really look like this. There, that looks better. Now, before I graphed this, I reset the default window settings on my calculator. I did that by pressing the zoom button and then going to number 6. So it reset the uh, 10, negative 10, 10, negative 10 on the screen. Now, there are three points of intersection on my screen, but I don't actually care about some of them. Let's think about this problem realistically. We're talking about how intense a light source is. So if you turn off a light, what's the intensity of the light? Well, isn't it zero? So can you have a negative intensity to light? No, we don't live in a black hole. We're not sucking in light. So it turns out that only these two locations can be optimal for the solutions to this problem. So we want to find out where those are at. So maybe I'll change my window setting on my calculator. Maybe I'll make my x value go from 0 to 10 instead of negative 10 to 10. So now this is what it looks like if instead I just go from 0 to 10 on the x-axis. So I made 0 my x minimum and 10 my uh, x maximum. So now all I have to do is look for these two locations. In order to do that, we're going to use our second trace, the calculate function. Number 5, which is intersection. And here's the thing about using intersection when you want to find two different points of intersection. When you go to intersect and the little cursor pops up, mine popped up over here for some reason, I'm going to use the arrow key and move it to be close to that particular zero. So I'm just going to keep hitting left, left, left until my little cursor is on top of it to the best of my ability. Then I'm going to hit enter three times. And it's going to tell me one of the points of intersection is when x is 1.67. And remember, we're solving for x, so I don't really care what y is. Y is 4 because it's hitting this horizontal line through y equals 4. All right, now, let's get rid of that, do a different color. Now I want to find this point of intersection. 
I have to go back and do this again. I have to go with a second trace, number five. And this time I'm going to move the little cursor so it's close to or on top of that zero to the best of my ability. Click, 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 click as I get my cursor over. And then I'm going to hit enter three times and it's going to tell me the other location is at 7.19. And there are my two solutions. Now, could I have also done this problem by setting the equation equal to zero and finding where it hits the x-axis? Absolutely. It just depends on which method you like better. The last thing we're going to talk about is solving inequalities graphically. I touched on this when we talked about inequalities in a previous section, but I'm going to reiterate this before we get to an example, because there are a couple ways of doing it. All right, let's start with this general inequality, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. When you have an inequality written in this format, it says where is the graph of x squared minus 5x plus 6 below the x-axis. It says where is it in the less than 0 region? Well, less than 0 is going to be below the x-axis. This would say where is the graph of x squared minus 5x plus 6 above the x-axis. Now, the only thing you got to watch out for with the inequality symbols is when you write your final answer, should you use the inequality symbol that's included or not included. So it really doesn't matter if it has the line underneath or not, as long as in your final answer, you use the correct inequality symbols. Or if you write your answer in interval notation, should you be using brackets or should you be using parentheses? Now, what if instead I gave you this problem? x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than x plus 1. Now, you, you have two ways of doing this problem. You can think about it like the equations we did earlier, where you get the inequality equal to 0, or not equal to 0, it should say less than 0. That's one way of doing the problem. But the other way of doing the problem is to graph these both and look for where this parabola, for what interval, is it below the graph of x plus 1. Which one is easier? I'm going to honestly tell you that Mr. Friedlieb and myself both prefer to do problems where we set equations equal to zero or inequalities with a zero on one side of them. That's our preferred method of doing it. So now let's go and actually solve an inequality graphically. I want to solve 3.7x squared plus 1.3x minus 1.9 is less than or equal to 2.0 minus 1.4x. Now I wrote this here. Um, this is the inequality if you get 0 to be one side. I'm going to actually start by doing this and looking for where this graph, which is going to be a quadratic parabola, is below, because that's what less than means, this linear equation. So this is what it looks like when I put it into my calculator. I put the left hand side of the inequality into y1 equals and the right hand side into y2 equals. Here's what the graph looks like. Now remember, we want to know where the parabola is less than or equal to the line. So we want to know what this interval is. In order to find that interval, we're going to need to find these two points of intersection. And we're going to do it like we did in the previous problem. I'm going to start by finding this point of intersection. I'm going to do that by doing second trace number five. I'm going to move the cursor so it's on top of or as close to that point of intersection as possible, and then hit enter three times and I find out that the x value is negative 1.45. To find this point of intersection, we're going to do the same thing. Second trace, 5, but I'm going to move the cursor as close to, if not on top of, that point of intersection. 
hit enter three times and it's going to tell me that it's at 0 0.72. Now remember the inequality symbol was less than or equal to. So that means that the solution, we're going to use brackets. So the interval in interval notation is bracket negative 1.45 comma 0.72 bracket. If you write it as an inequality, it would have been written like this. Either solution was fine. If you had instead decided to use the inequality where we uh, made one side zero, the one that was 3.7x squared plus 2.7x minus 3.9 is less than or equal to zero, this is the graph you would have gotten and we would have wanted to find this interval, which means we would have needed to find these zeros. And it probably would help uh, in terms of looking at the graph by zooming in. You can zoom in by going to zoom, press number two, which is zoom in, and then you gotta hit enter, because if you go to number two, you're like, oh, well, it looks exactly the same. That's because you have to hit enter for the amount of times you want to zoom in. So, that's another way of doing it, and then I could have just found these zeros using second trace, calculate number two, and then for the zero on the left-hand side, the left-hand bound would be negative two, and the right-hand bound would be negative one. For the zero over on the right-hand side, the left bound would have been zero, and the right bound would have been one, and you would have gotten the exact same answers. Remember earlier I said that for solving inequalities graphically, Mr. Friedlieb and I kind of prefer problems where one side of the problem is zero. We think this makes the problem easier graphically. So for x cubed minus 5x squared is greater than or equal to negative 8, I would first change this to x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8 is greater than or equal to zero because then you're looking at the graph and trying to find where this portion of the graph is above the x-axis. But in this particular problem, a little something different is going to happen. All right, so I'm not even going to show you what I typed into y1 equals. I think you know what to type into y1 equals. What I want to do is I want to look at this graph. Here's the graph. And since we want to know where the graph is greater than or equal to zero, we want to know where it's above the x-axis. So this part is above the x-axis, but so is this. Remember that even though the graph doesn't show you an arrow, you need to be able to interpret this as it going in that direction forever, whether it be up or down. Okay, so here's the deal. One of the answers is an interval. Whenever you have a little parabolic shape like this, you're going to have a little interval going on. This is going to be an inequality that starts at some value on the x-axis and then goes off to infinity. So when we put this into interval notation, the right bound would be infinity with a parenthesis. All right, let's get rid of this stuff for now. So let's start with this interval here and figure out where it hits the x-axis. It may help to zoom in a little bit. So if you go to zoom and then number two and then hit enter, we may be able to see where it hits the x-axis a little bit better. Okay, so now I've zoomed in and here's my picture. This solution is between negative 2 and negative 1. Remember that when you use the zero function to find where something hits the x-axis, you need to use the left bound first and then the right bound, and then when you're in the negative side of the x-axis, the more negative a number is, the more to the left it is. This second one here is between tick marks 1 and 2. So, I'm going to go to second trace, number 2, and I'm going to start by finding this one first. So for my left bound, I'm going to type in negative 2. I should try that again, negative 2. For my right bound, I'm going to type in negative 1 and then hit enter. And that's going to tell me that the x value is about negative 1.14. 
And now I'm going to find the one over on this side. So I have to go back to second trace number two. The left bound will be one. The right bound will be two. And then it's going to tell me the solution is at 1.52. So part of the answer to this problem is bracket negative 1.14 comma 1.52 bracket. The reason I knew to use the brackets is because the original inequality symbol was greater than or equal to. Remember, if it had just been greater than, you would have used parentheses. Well, now we have to go back and talk about that other part of the graph. You know, this part. So now i got to go back and find out where that hits the x-axis. If I erase this, it, or I, I know this is a little fuzzy on here. It doesn't take the greatest pictures. But on my graphing calculator, if I count the tick marks, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It looks like this is between tick marks four and five. So I'm going to go to second trace, number two. My left bound will be four. My right bound will be five. And it's going to tell me that it hits the x-axis at about 4.63. So I'm going to write that part of the interval as bracket 4.63 comma infinity parentheses. So the actual full answer to the problem is, oops, wrong direction, this and this. So we're going to write it as, let's see, what do we say? Negative 1.14 comma 1.5, what was it? 1.52. And then union bracket 4.63 comma infinity. And that's how we write it in interval notation.